Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host Mondane, this video is part of my controller collection series, and today we're going to be talking about my final Dreamcast controller and some GameCube controllers. Now, I know, I know, I've got a problem. It's collecting controllers for my system. And for the most part, I'm okay with it. it. Takes up a little bit of room, but I love my controllers. I love being able to be able to offer my friends that come over to be able to play with the controller of their choice and stuff like that. So in this episode, I'm going to show you the one final Dreamcast controller. It's a little bit on the rare side. I don't see them very often. Um, and then we're going to move on to some GameCube controllers. Uh, I loved collecting for the GameCube, uh, especially with controllers, just like I did with the Dreamcast. Um, it was it was pretty much the thing to do for me, was just to go through and make sure that when me and my friends were playing together, that we could all play together on the same GameCube and just have as much fun as we possibly could. These were back in my college days and stuff. and you know, I, I I love all of my controls. I really do, and I try to keep them all up running as much as I can and not have them degrade in any way. With all of that said, let's get on with the controllers. Next up we have the Dreamcast First Person Shooter Controller. It has four hat switches that are four directional, as and these two buttons right here as well. There's a start button, there are the two analog triggers, here is a movement ball, which is kind of weird, um, or I think it's either movement or aiming. And then there's the three clicks right here. And then there is another click right here on the front, and then the trigger. And the joystick moves around in all the directions. It does not twist. And it has a VMU slot here and a basic Dreamcast controller plug-in. Um, the controller is made by Mad Cats and stuff, and the other neat thing is that the ball actually uh, lights up when you plug the system in, and it's actually fairly bright. This is a GameCube controller. Uh, it is, you know, it's, it's your basic GameCube controller. It has everything that the WaveBird does, except this has rumble, the WaveBird doesn't, uh, the cord is fairly long. I wish it was a little bit longer, but uh, this is actually one of the actual real GameCubes and not a re-release. Uh, it has the tri-wing screws in the bottom. It has the analogs. It has the Z button. It has the two analogs. It has the start D-pad. All, all of these are membrane style uh, keys, except for um, this one up here is actually micro think it's a micro switch. I'll have to double check. Uh, these are analogs with membranes at the back, which is that extra like weird click that you get at the at the back end of them. These are extraordinarily popular because of Super Smash Brothers. Um, I have a set that I will not let other people play with Super Smash Brothers because that game literally destroys these controllers. All right, now we have the Wave Bird. Uh, the Wave Bird is just a wireless, like the, the first radio, one of the first radio wireless mass produced first party controllers by Nintendo. Um, it's a very good controller. You have to have AA batteries. And then, you know, it's fairly good condition. Uh, a lot of these analog sticks wear out. And then there's, oh my gosh, shadows. Um, D-pads, four buttons, and then analog buttons up at the top, a start, and then there's the, the wheel that has the different things, but it has to match the wheel on this one, and if they don't match the same channel, or if you don't have one of these, you definitely want to get one of these. If you see like just one of these out in the wild by itself, Definitely pick it up because even having extras of these is great because you can hook them up 
one to your GameCube and another one to your Wii and then just be able to use this one controller between the two systems relatively easily. You just sit there and set this to one 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 channel and set the other one to another channel and then you just flop, flip back and forth between the two um, whenever you want to. Is the GameCube keyboard adapter. Um, now it comes with a keyboard but I've since lost mine. I think it just stopped working and I threw it away. Uh, but it's you know, fairly easy GameCube to uh, SP2, or um, I think that's the connector. I'll have to look it up. But, you know, uh, this was originally put out by, um, I forgot which company, uh, I think it was Codemasters, and a lot of people got this to basically play Fantasy Star Online and be able to type, and or Typing of the Dead. I think Typing of the Dead was on GameCube. I'll have to look that one up too. Um, but this is a really good device. Uh, it works with any P2 keyboard, and I'm very happy to have it. At least is another GameCube adapter. Uh, this actually came with the Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles game. Um, basically, it uses this to hook up to a Game Boy Advance, and then it plugs this into a GameCube, and uh, there are several games that actually make use of this, but I thought this was a really neat device, and I had to have one, and thankfully it came with the game that I was uh, getting. But I really do uh, like having this. Um, these are, I don't think these are very rare, but uh, I don't commonly see them out in the wild too much. These are my Donkey Konga bongos. They have little switches in them, and actually there is a large fairly decent cord with this um, but there is a it's got a start button right here uh, this is actually a microphone for clapping as uh, you just sit there and you just you know you know clap and it'll it'll tell um, the, the great thing about uh, that I love about this is you can wrap the cord around it and then when you're done wrapping the cord around the the GameCube connector fits down in there and it it makes it a fairly neat package and you can actually depending on how you're winding it you can wind it one way or the other and it just goes in there and it's it's beautiful it works just perfectly but these are the donkey konga bongos there's mainly uh just a few games that this works with but they're really fun to have well that's it for this episode of mondane designs i'm your host mondane and i hope you enjoyed this episode as much as i enjoyed making it I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.